Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to my YouTube channel, Life Science with KMD. Today, I am going to explain about SNP markers, that is Single Nucleotide Polymorphism Markers. Single Nucleotide Polymorphism comes under the type called Sequence Based Markers. Polymorphism is a generic term, means many shapes. Each single nucleotide polymorphism represents a difference in a single DNA building block called nucleotides. A single nucleotide polymorphism may fall within the coding sequence, then it uh, coding sequence of the gene, or it could be in, present in the non-coding region of the gene, or it could be in the intergeneric region or the region between the genes. So this single uh, nucleotide polymorphism within a coding region do not necessarily change the amino acid sequence of the protein that is produced due to degeneration of genetic code. Following are the types of SNPs. One is non-coding region, another one is coding region. SNP in the coding region are further divided into two types. One is synonymous and another one is non-synonymous. Synonymous SNP do not affect the protein sequence. Whereas the non-synonymous change the amino acid sequence of the protein, the non-synonymous SNP are further divided into missense and nonsense. First, we will learn about some of the facts about single nucleotide polymorphism. SNPs are found in both coding as well as non-coding region occur with a very high frequency that is about like 1 in 1000 base pairs to 1 in 100 to 300 base pairs. The abundance of SNPs uh, and the ease with which they can be measured make this genetic variation significant. Usually SNP, uh, SNPs close to particular gene act as a molecular marker for that gene. In the same way, SNP in the coding region may alter the protein structure and uh, made by that coding region. SNPs in coding region may alter the protein structure made by that coding region. So later on, we have to see like how we can map the um, SNP. So usually we will mapping of the SNP will be done by First, what we have to do is that sequencing of the genome of a large number of people, then later compare the base sequence to discover the single nucleotide polymorphism. Then generate a single map of human genome containing all possible single nucleotide polymorphisms. Methods of identification of SNPs. There are two types. One is detection of known SNPs and another one is identification of a new SNPs. Here it is the known SNP whereas the uh, second one was the identification of new SNP. Now this first one which is a detection of a known SNP is further divided into two types. One is non-gel based high output genotyping technology and another one is gel based genotyping method. In case of non-gel based high output uh, genotyping technology, there are two types. One is hybridization using fluorescence resonance energy transfer detection and another one is high density chip array. Whereas in case of gel based genotyping method, it can be identified by four types that is PCR with restriction enzyme coupled analysis. Second one is amplification refractory mutation system. Third is um, oligonucleotide ligation assay or mini sequencing. In case of the second type that is identification of a new SNP, it can be done by two methods that is confirmation based mutation scanning and direct DNA sequencing. Now what are the applications of SNPs? SNP is used for the identification and forensics. It is also used for mapping and genome with association studies of complex diseases like for example cancer. SNP is used for the estimating uh, used for estimating predisposition of the diseases 
even it is used to predict and specific to predict a specific genetic traits it is used for classifying patient in clinical trial thanks for watching my video please subscribe to my channel by clicking on subscription button subscription doesn't cost you any money to get a notification click on a bell icon do like and share this video with friends and family if you have any kind of feedback do share it on a comment box thank you